word, if you would, good sir. This place, it is within the realm of Eorzea. You're an odd-looking fellow, aren't you? Still, takes all sorts, I suppose. Uh, this here's Vesper Bay, Thanalan's door to the ocean, as some folk like to call it. Am I to understand from your answer that I have indeed arrived in Eorzea? Eh? Yes, you're in Eorzea. A plain response at last, and the one I wanted at that. My journey was not without its hardships, and I would sooner travel by land than put to sea again. <laughs> you do not believe that so small a bark could bear me across the ocean? Such timid little sailors. I had but to set my course, and set my jaw till I made port. <laughs> Though, it would perhaps have been wise to lay down my oars a moment to sup on more than the spray of brine water. By the trembling of my limbs, I sense a brief repast may be in order. Nay, I will not hearken to the feeble grumblings of an empty belly. Duty comes before all. Good God, man! Are you all right? Thou art far indeed from home, friend. Dear friends, pray accept my heartfelt thanks for your efforts in defense of Gridania's borders. I would fain dwell longer on my gratitude for the support of the Alliance, but the situation at Belsar's Wall demands that we forego such pleasantries. According to our most recent intelligence, the cocoon of light that formed in the air above the wall remains undimmed and unbroken. After measuring the cocoon's etheric concentrations, Archon Yishtola has confirmed the presence of a primal entity. <laughs> so we must assume that Ilbert's thrice damned god is indeed trapped within. And what news of the Imperials? They're not like to ignore such a spectacle. Sir, a Galian airship was observed making an approach, but the vessel was destroyed when it drew near. The Empire appears to have made no subsequent attempts to reach the object. The soldiers who witnessed the incident spoke of a lance of light issuing from within the cocoon. 
of an entire warship being reduced to smoking ruin in the space of a moment. Veterans of Cartano, meanwhile, likened the destruction to that wrought by the fiery wrath of Bahamut. We could face another calamity. So the Primal is awake then? Contained, yes, but for how long? We must destroy it now, lest it break free. Agreed. There is, however, the small matter of how to get close enough to a being that swats warships from the sky as you would a bothersome gnat. Is this truly so complex a puzzle? Or have you no stomach for the obvious solution? What in the hells are you doing here? A pleasure to see you too, Garland. Now, if you'd be so kind as to explain to these good people why you should be begging me for my assistance, that would be most appreciated. Who is this man? Oh, how terrifically rude of me. Nero Tolskeva, former Tribunus of the 14th Legion of the Garlean Empire. These days, however, one might say that I'm something of a free agent. What do you want, Nero? I was getting to that. Although you already know what I'm about to propose, old friend. As you have rather belatedly realized, within that frail binding lurks an entity alike in strength to the great Bahamut, and the only force in existence which might conceivably contend with such a foe is the very creation which captured the Elder Primal in the first place. I speak, of course, of Omega. Omega? That hulk has been gathering dust beneath the plains of Cartanal since the Alagans breathed the last. And none alive knows how to wake it. I'm sorry. Do you understand who it is with whom you have the privilege of speaking? I'm Nero Tolskeva, Master Engineer, the mechanical genius who restored the Ultima weapon to full operational capacity. And as luck would have it, I am graciously offering you the use of my considerable expertise. And what, you just expect us to accept? You're a fool if you think your deeds at the Crystal Tower are enough to win my trust, Nero. Trust? You wound me, Garland. All those years studying side by side at the Academy, sharing both trial and triumph, we were countrymen once, you and I. But sentiment aside, have you a better solution? Or do you mean to send in your vaunted hero there, as you always do, and pray the world is not engulfed in flame? Let us approach the problem in a rational manner. Does not the fact that Omega slumbers in stasis point to the existence of some overriding technology? A means of control? I would ask a question, if I may. Nero, was it not? In the event that we succeeded in using Omega to shackle the Primal in the manner you propose, what then would become of it? Do we not risk repeating the mistakes of the Alagans? 
Omega is but a tool. How we choose to employ that tool is entirely up to us. Of course, if you would rather leave it buried beneath Cartano while you continue your petty squabbles above, then I suppose that is also your choice. Spare us, Nero. The Seed Seer's concern is a valid one. He who controls Omega wields the power of the gods, the very power which led the Alagans to destroy themselves. And does it not fall to we engineers to prevent such misuse? What was your company's proud slogan? Freedom through technology? <laughs> A creed you follow, is it? <sighs> what say you? Do we take this villain at his word? As will I. I don't like it, but then it doesn't look like we have much choice. Would the Council be willing to entrust this matter to a pair of former Imperials? Yes. The task of restoring the Alagan relic will be yours. But the responsibility for its reawakening must remain with the Council. Do we condone this course of action? Aye. It would seem we do. Let the record show that we invest this contingent with the authority to enter Cartanau and take command of Omega. Sid? I appoint you leader of the expedition. Scions, I would ask that you assign some few of your number to escort Master Garland and supervise the other one. We should be happy to oblige. The politics of Cardano being what they are, I dare say our neutrality will prove useful in avoiding any unnecessary entanglements. If I am not mistaken, Doma occupies a similarly neutral position. Might we not persuade you to join the expedition, Lady Yugiri? If you suspected any foul play from Nero, you would be welcome to kill him. My blade is yours. Not a moment's hesitation, eh? You'll forgive me if I do not shake your hand.
Hmm, so these are the fabled headquarters of the Scions. I confess I would have expected an order of self-proclaimed warrior scholars to surround themselves with the fruits of man's enlightenment. And yet there's not so much as a single piece of Magitek in sight. It never ceases to amaze me how primitive you Eorzeans truly are. Oh, I'll have you know that the Rising Stones is home to the very latest in Magitek innovation. Wedge calls it the Mark 14 Thermocoil Boilmaster, and it's the finest kettle I've ever had the pleasure to own. We are returned. Well, Ida and I, at least. Ishtola and the others remain behind to continue their assessment of the binding magic. There didn't seem much point staying just for that, so I decided to come back with Alphano. Papalimo bought us this time. We shouldn't waste it. By your leave! God, that voice could fell a gigas. This is the Rising Stones, domicile of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. I enter at the invitation of one Lord Urionge. <laughs> I spy you there, Shadow Walker. You always were a hard one to find. Yugiri, do you know this man? Gosetsu! Why are you come to Eorzea? In search of you, Yugiri! For days and nights did I row across the angry sea. I made port in good spirits, only for my own flesh to betray me over the trifling matter of an empty belly. Collapsed in the street like an unfed stray I was, until Lord Urionge came to my aid. Over a most welcome meal, we spoke of the plight of Doma, and I learned of our displaced countrymen's work to resettle this blighted land. T'was blind fortune that I was able to locate you so swiftly. But now we must make ready to depart. Our master languishes in dire peril, and Doma calls her daughter home. It is not so simple, Gosetsu. There are obligations which bind me here. You... You refuse? Did you mislay your oath during your flight from our homeland? The laws of hospitality must be honored, but surely the vow to defend your master demands the greater obeisance. It was our master who bid me guide our people to safe haven by any means necessary. And it was the scions you see before you who provided us succor and sanctuary when all others refused. Dire peril or no, were I to return without first repaying such hospitality, our master would cut me down at the threshold. Hmm, mayhap that is so. There is more. A crisis threatens all within this realm, Eorzean and Doman alike, and I go to play my part in its resolution. I will not bring shame upon our liege by abandoning my people or my duty. Hmm, how very noble of you. Now, in the name of honor, kinship, and, ah oh yes, practicality, might I suggest we get this expedition underway? Or would you rather debate the finer points of duty and leave Omega to the Empire? The Empire? You, Giddy? You draw steel against the curse of Gollumold? Then why did you not say so? My blade is oath-bound to fall upon the ranks of the Imperials wheresoever they march. 
Lead on, Shadow Walker, and may the enemy tremble at our coming. <laughs>